Hello guys and welcome here to the Texas Motor Speedway for race number 14 of the Jell-O Cup Series season here today on GCN. I'm Brian James here in the booth with you. Starting on the pole today will be Patrick Smith in the number 42. I believe this is his second straight race on the pole, if not second in three races. He's on a hot streak with getting poles. Can he translate to that to a second win? That remains to be determined. And it's a championship front row, actually. The Season 4 champ and the Season 3 champ, both on the front row, as Diego Yepes is to his outside. We saw kind of a wild race at Charlotte. Caution came out in the middle of a pit sequence, happened a few times, really jumbled up the field, and somehow, someway, Casey Naneko ended up on the right side of things. He gets the win. He also gets the double playoff points. So it now complicates the picture for some of these guys. Again, I stressed at the beginning of the year, and I continue to stress now, five playoff points won't do it for you when we get down to race 23, 24, 25, 26. So, you know, the battle for playoff points continues. There are going to be guys here today as well who are saying, I need to add to that total. I need to put myself, or some of them might be saying, I need to put myself in a good situation entering Darlington. Others are riding the momentum from Charlotte and saying, let's keep this going here today at Milwaukee and at Road America. Let's continue this. We have a good run going for us. Obviously, others are just doing damage control right now. One guy who doesn't need to worry entering here is Dustin Davis. That guy has a 94 point lead right now. He has no concerns entering this race. It would take them locking him in a porta potty to prevent him from starting the race. And that would have to happen at two straight tracks. There ain't no way they're going to fool him that bad and lock him up for two races in order to allow him to lose that points lead. Actually, it would take three races, in a sense. Again, 44 points is a one-race lead in the standings. 88 is a two-race two lead. The big thing for him now is there's really no stress entering this race. Probably no stress entering the next race or the race after that. If he can maintain an 88-point lead through here, Milwaukee, Road America... We had Darlington next. Heck, if he enters there with an 88-point lead or greater, no one can touch him at Darlington. And you got to imagine he is thinking that right now. I am unbeatable right now. But you know what would set me ahead of the rest is a win. He can go for it just for the heck of it, just for the sake of it. He can go for it in this race, and it won't hurt him. He has that much of a cushion. The question is, are guys going to be attacking him knowing that he's the guy to beat right now? Because now he's going to have a chip on his shoulder here. You know, everyone's got to be sitting here thinking, gee, I need to get, you know, we need to beat this five car somehow. He's been the class of the field all year. He hasn't won a race. I'm telling you, when he does win a race, I'm predicting right now, he is going to go on an onslaught for the rest of the year. He is just that good. That five team is just that strong. I think there's a possibility he could run away with this very, very early on. And these guys need to sound the alarm. These guys in the front running for the point standings. There are guys as well who are go or go homers. Now, at the last race, switching the topic here, of course... We mentioned the double points race is crucial for them if they can come away with a lot of points. It could move. It could make the difference between them being far out or just inside. We did not have a change last race in the top 33, which shocked me because I thought for sure we would have some form of change. However, Jordan Anderson is currently the guy just trailing the top 33 entering this race, and with that, Let's show you your knockout qualifying results on your screen. Trevor Collins, of course, you saw Austin Shaw starting in third. 
He made the race. So did Giorgio Stumu, Dan Hummel, Jordan Anderson, Francis Hawes, and Willa Ruby Crouch. Keep an eye on that 78 and the 34 of this race. Those two are 34th and 35th entering this race respective, respectively. And no doubt in my mind they will press hard here today to try to get inside that top 33. Especially knowing the Milwaukee Mile and Road America are the next two races up in Wisconsin. Anything could happen. Well, I wouldn't say anything could happen at Milwaukee. It's generally a mile-long track, kind of like a New Hampshire. So maybe some change up there. But Road America, that's a wild card race before another double points race over at Darlington. So, again, they got to be on the offensive here. So we'll see if they are able to do that. Man, I've thrown a lot at you guys here so far. Let's roll the intro. Let's collect ourselves here. I may need to. I'm getting really animated right now. <laughs> you can tell I'm excited for this race. We'll be back with the starting lineup here in just a moment. You are watching the Gaming Collaboration Network, home of the Jello Cup Series. And I believe this time, the 43 Tim Randolph will win at Daytona. The Lift National Series. Here we go. They make their way through turn three and four. The pace car will peel off. And for the first time ever, the Lift National Series is green. Here at Daytona. The Hitachi Truck Series. And here we go. The pace truck is gonna peel off. And for the first time ever in GTN history, we have a truck series and we are underway under the lights here at Daytona. And Tuesday Night Heat. GCN presentation starts right now. I gotta tell you, if I wasn't getting animated, and like I said, you guys wish I had a camera, but if I didn't get animated, I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing. Anyway, let's roll the starting lineup here on the left hand side of your screen. Oh man. Yeah, so Nate Faden, he's going to start up front, too. Keep an eye on him. Of course, keep an eye on Samet Ozcon. He won the truck race here on Thursday night. Of course, but up front, it is the two ch past champions. It's Patrick Smith and Diego Yepes. On a turn four, they'll lead us to the restart zone. The green flag is out. We're underway at Texas. And Diego Yepes makes use of that outside lane early on, and he will lead the opening lap. We do have a caution. Oh, the 41, Matt Dixon, the 66 of Jesse James, the 93, Ricky Johnson. It's a huge wreck here. And even more, Dan Hummel, Dallas Jordan. Oh, my goodness. A huge huge wreck to open up the race I can't believe what just 
transpired here on lap number one, lap number two. A lot of cars just wrecked out of the race. And that is not a good start here at Texas. Who said Texas was boring? I want to speak to those people directly after that wreck. You can't say Texas is boring now. Oh, Casey Naneko is one of them as well, by the way. The Coke 600 winner, his day is over. I'm sure not what he wanted. Let's show you the pit stops before we go see a replay here. See there, 18 done. The Royal Canaan Chevy, or Toyota rather. Here we go, they're just going to top off with fuel. A few of these guys. Samad Ozcon made contact, I think, with the 7. A Brandon Harris. See the double zero and the 48 are going to win the race off. 42 did right sides. They lose a few positions. Let's go see what happened. It's been the same story all weekend. Three wide off the corner never works out. And it definitely didn't for Jesse James here. He gets hooked, spins it around. And you see this drags the 41, the 93, and others into a messy situation. Up ahead, it looks like the 53, Dallas Jordan, just blew up. But what happened up here? You see the 10 merged. I want to know what happened to the 25. Oh, something happened up here too, so it looks like it was two separate incidents. Yeah, you see just three wide into turn one and two, and just, there's plenty of room there. No one just wanted to give an inch. And up the track go the 51 and the 25, and they unfortunately dragged the 18 into that as well. And the 8 involved. And just tough break all around. We'll take you back to the green. Here we go. We are getting ready for the restart. Francis Hawes, Xavier Rain, Casey Naneko, Dan Hummel, Eric Faden, Charles Sanford, Jesse James, and Matt Dixon. All done for the day here at Texas. Tough break for those guys. It'll be Diego Yepes leading us back. Austin Sean second. Semedos come third. Nathan Faden fourth. Brandon Harrison fifth. Mitchell Collins in sixth. Pat Patrick Smith in seventh. David Paschal in eighth. Scott Upton in ninth. And in tenth is Tyler Faden. Here we go. The pace car will peel off. And the green flag will wave. We're back on our way at Texas. Keep an eye on this. Again, you're going to want to watch the three wide racing here. You see Nathan Faden go for second. And Diego Yepes will get away for the time being. Keep in mind, if he picks up a second win on the campaign, that should very well lock him into the playoffs. And look at how far he's gotten ahead so far. Also, a second win on the campaign would tie him for second all-time on the wins list with Eric Faden, Alexander Rowe, and the inactive Tim Horton. And the same could be done for Nathan Faden, who's in second, now trying to chase down the race leader. Here goes Mitchell Collins for second. He was oh so close, but no cigar at Talladega. And he's looking to make up for it here today. He got beat out by a fender by his buddy Zach Fitzwater there and he won't get second this time boy he'd love to put the woods in victory lane here we go 
Now you see Yepa is starting to expand his lead a little bit once again. Again, the other thing is he's looking to gain some playoff points. So even if he leads the most laps here, that would be an extra playoff point for him. And a much needed one. Keep in mind, he only has five playoff points. So you can imagine he's taking it to heart right now that, hey, I need to get some points and get us above that five point marker. And of course, they've had some up and down, they've had some roller coaster luck the last few races. You know, stuff happens. But they would surely like to get back on the right track after winning at Vegas earlier this year. And Mitchell Collins up to second now. He will chase down Diego Yepes. And Brandon Harris will follow and take third. Mitchell Collins is there. He puts the bumper right to the double zero. Doesn't exactly push him, but he will take the race lead this time. Mitchell Collins, now the race leader. And Diego Yepes under pressure for second right now. That is Brandon Harris in the Tommy Baldwin Chevrolet. Keep in mind, the rookies have struggled to get some good results so far. Of course, the win at Daytona by Chase Miller, the only win by a rookie this year. Brandon Harris would love to join that list. And right now, he's just got to get around Diego Yepes to have his sights on Mitchell Collins in the race lead. And he'll clear this time, so now Brandon Harris will chase down the 21. And Diego Yepa is going to lose a few positions here. He'll fall back to fourth. Here goes Brandon Harris. He's right there. Oh, man, did they touch. Likely. Off of turn four. Will the seven take the lead? He will. Brandon Harris, the new race leader. And Mitchell Collins did all he could there. There's still plenty of racing left. These guys don't have to panic yet. Brandon Harris, keep in mind that team started out as a go-or-go-home race team. At the beginning of the year, they struggled. They climbed into the top 33. And now looking to get a victory, a chase securing vic or playoff securing victory, or playoff eligible victory, I should say, not securing. Because keep in mind, five or six points again might not do the job to get you in. Up oh, the caution's out. See some guys pitting. That's going to suck for those guys who just cycled around under caution to pit. Brandon Harris will lead us back. Let's go side by side in just a moment here we gotta figure out who exactly caused this caution cuz I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't see much of anything other than Ricky Johnson's torn up front end anyway let's go side by side and we'll show you what happened to bring out the caution here at Texas 
All right, it looks like the six was make uh, Tim Randolph made kind of a late commitment to the pit lane, and you can see all these guys slowed down trying to get on. And around goes the six after some contact with Joshua Sakali. So nothing big brings out the caution here, but obviously this is enough to warn it with guys coming to the pit lane. Tough break for Tim Randolph. You might lose a few here. And let's take you back to the green here on GCN in just a moment. Getting ready for the restart here. Brandon Harris will be the race leader. Mitchell Collins second. David Paschal third. Giorgio Stumu fourth. Nathan Faden in fifth. Sixth is Chase Miller. Seventh is Patrick Smith. Eighth is Dylan Young. Ninth is Scott Upton. And in tenth is Tyler Faden. Pace car will peel off. And the rookies are in a good situation here. First and third. We're back underway. And it's also a lap traffic moment presented by Fitzwater's angerness here as you see. The 27, Alexander Rowe causing an issue, so is the 24. And the 7 is held up. Here comes the 20 of Giorgio Stumo. The 21 just basically put the bumper to the 7. Trying to put all the pressure he can on this rookie. And Mitchell Collins will go to the race lead. Now he'll try to navigate his way through some of this lap traffic. Here comes Giorgio Stumo for second. He is one of the go or go homers. Keep in mind, if Giorgio Stumo wins, it won't necessarily put him in playoff contention, but it'll put him closer, if not into the top 33 and you gotta imagine that's weighing on them right now here comes Chase Miller as well and a win by him would give him an undoubtable advantage in playoff points here comes the 35 Right now, Mitchell Collins hanging on for the race lead as they battle for second behind him. Here we go. Can Mitchell Collins make easy work of the two-time winner this season in Nate Ratchery? Because if he can't, that 20 is right there and ready to pounce. You see, he gets around for the time being, but Nate Ratchery with the run on the outside, he'll uh, reclaim his lap back. Man, Mitchell Collins is just so slow right now compared to these guys behind him. You can tell he's really holding him up as Chase Miller goes to second. Keep an eye on that 35. Again, keep in mind they're already Daytona 500 winners, so they are locked in to the playoffs just about. Of course, they got to stay top 30 to make it happen. Mitchell Collins thought about going low to block him. Battle for the lead. And you see there, the 35 just can't do it to the inside that time. Mitchell Collins is hanging on for dear life. He's got the two Hendrick drivers ahead of him, making life very difficult. 35 is winding up again. He's going to look for the race lead. And again, no luck for Chase Miller. Mitchell Collins hangs on for the time being. He's running a middle lane, trying to make something happen. 35 looks low. 
Is this the chance that Chase Miller needed? Maybe. Here goes the 21 on the high side of Nate Ratchery. And Ratchery still won't give it up. And now Chase Miller will have a run in turns 1 and 2. This could be it. And in fact it will be it. Chase Miller to the race lead. Brandon Harris will try to follow for second. He won't be able... Uh, he actually will be able to do so this time. So Brandon Harris to second. My apologies there. Here we go, battle for second. Once again, Mitchell Collins still on that high side trying to keep it. You see guys pitting, and they narrowly avoid that. Harris to second, Upton to third. And up ahead, Chase Miller just lapped the 24. Now you see Mitchell Collins will look low. He'll get second easily. He'll dive it right in there to make it happen. Oh, they're side by side coming to the pit lane. They'll settle it. And thankfully they will. Now the 21 will close up on Chase Miller. And he'll try to make easy work of them here. But keep in mind, they might be pitting this lap. You don't want to block them. And Mitchell Collins will come in this time. So will the 35, but the 35's carrying a lot of momentum. That's just dangerous, what Chase Miller did. I mean, this should give him a pretty good advantage coming off the pit lane, but still, that's just a dangerous move. You don't do that coming to the pit lane. And we'll see if they nab him for speeding, too. Keep that in mind. And I think they should. That was reckless right there. See him coming off here. There's some of the lap traffic once again. And there's Chase Miller coming off here. And we will see. Will he cycle out to be the race leader? He will. And he's going to have a few cars between him and second place. Either Nate Ratchery battling with Dylan Ibrahimian. And way farther back is Mitchell Collins. And you imagine... He's got to be furious because I think race control will not be penalizing the 35. And he's just got to be saying, you've got to be kidding me. He just flat out went for broke entering the pit lane. But Chase Miller very strategic in doing so, getting to the pit lane. And he's got a pretty sizable advantage. Keep in mind, he's got 10 playoff points right now. He could walk out of here with 5 or 6 more.
which would put him at 15 or 16 playoff points. A mega lead, and it would put him above Dustin Davis. So this is some, if he gets the most laps led, this would put him above Dustin Davis right now, who's currently running in 14th. Again, there's no panic for him. He's just running for for uh, the heck of it today because he knows he's got a huge points lead. But the fact that he has no playoff points ba uh, banked up on the playoff grid, this could bump him down to the number two seed with a win by Chase Miller today. And you see he's caught lap traffic. Yet another lap traffic moment presented by Fitzwater's angriness. But I don't think he's going to be too angry. 53, Dallas Jordan will let him go. Yeah, and I don't think there will be much angriness here. He's got about a 3.6 second lead. The only person who might be angry is that number 21 of Mitchell Collins. He's down to 3 seconds. But you see Chase Miller going through a lot of the slap traffic with ease. We come to 10 laps to go at Texas. Again, after this, next Sunday we go to Milwaukee. Yeah, so we go to Milwaukee next Sunday. That'll be at 2.15 p.m. Eastern, and we won't have to worry about a NASCAR Cup Series event interfering with this one, or us interfering, you know, vice versa. Oh, caution's out. A wreck in turns, or in the front stretch, and it might have been Nicky Martinez. We will get a restart out of this. I would say this is a lucky break for Mitchell Collins, but it all depends on if they pit. If the leaders don't pit, oh, 16, Tyler Faden, blown up as well. And the leaders will pit. And I don't know why the 27, the 38, and the 24 are pitting. They're not supposed to pit under the first lap of the caution. And it's just to top off with fuel. Oh, 35's held up. If I'm Mitchell Collins, I'm going to top off quick and try to be as close that 35 as I can possibly be and he'll only have one car between them which is good let's go see what happened another incident of three wide off the corner Sky Commons hooks Nicky Martinez this of course also involves Nathan Faden another wreck he's been involved in this season that's a tough break for Nathan Faden but the good news is not much damage from it He'll be able to continue, but Nikki Martinez here, she's able to continue. But look at what happened then. The 16 nowhere to go. Except straight into the back of the 95. And that just kills Tyler Faden's day and likely Nikki Martinez's day. Tough break. We'll take you back to the green. Getting ready for the restart here. As, as mentioned, the 16 and the 95, their days are over. And again, no penalties for the 24 or the 27 for pitting a lap sooner than they were allowed to. Which is very shocking. But I guess not really. The AI never gets punished in this game. They can do no wrong. Chase Miller is the race leader, Mitchell Collins is second, Giorgio Stumu third, Michael Collins in fourth, a good run going for them. 
a little bit further back. Fifth is Brandon Harris. Sixth is Scott Upton. Seventh is Jordan Anderson. Eighth is Trevor Collins. Ninth is Dylan Young. Tenth is Patrick Smith. We're back underway. Oh, the 35 trying to get around the 53. It's a lap traffic moment presented by Fitzwater's angriness. And Mitchell Collins not able to do so, so fast. It's now a rookie battle up front. Michael Collins jumped the restart and gained two positions. Talk about luck there. We come to four laps to go. It's going to be a battle between those two. Mitchell Collins will try to get around the 24 and make something happen as Michael Collins goes to the lead. Michael Collins is one of those guys battling with Dustin Davis for the points lead. He's up front in the standings, but of course he's well out of the points battle right now as we come to three to go. Mitchell Collins just took second and he will now try to chase down the 11. The 24 Nate Rattree's looking inside. Will Mitchell Collins follow? He'll follow his... He'll follow the 11 and they're coming to pit. Not enough fuel. Two laps of racing to go. And now it's a battle between Jordan Anderson and Mitchell Collins. Do they have enough fuel to get to the finish? Keep in mind Jordan Anderson is battling to get into that top 33. And the white flag is out. One lap of racing to go presented by Mitchell's Memes. And Jordan Anderson could catch a huge break. Look at how worn those tires are. He had to go down to 140 in that corner. We mentioned the rookies have not had much success this season. They haven't won a race since Daytona, and a rookie's going to win here today at Texas. It's Jordan Anderson, the winner today. How's about that? And a go or go home upset here today at Texas as Jordan Anderson claims the win. He's going to have a little ways to go if he wants to get into this playoff battle. But no doubt today's win just helped him get a lot closer. And Mitchell Collins again falling just short. Chase Miller with a good day, though. But Mitchell Collins, he's got to be sitting there thinking, what do I have to do to win a race this year? So that's the second race in the last three that he has come so close, but yet fallen just short. Oh man, we want to thank you for watching, we're going to show you your results and standings, we'll see you here next Sunday for the Jell-O Cup Series race number 15 at Milwaukee, and the next two weekends in Wisconsin too, so until then, goodbye everyone.